In October 2009, Wally Moran, a Canadian sailing writer and professional charter skipper, voyaged to the Chesapeake Bay and the U.S. Sailboat Show in Annapolis, Maryland. There, he was a featured speaker on the topic of cruising to Cuba. Hello, and welcome to Forbidding, Forbidden Cuba. My name's Wally Moran. I'm a writer for Sail Magazine and for Waterway Guide, publications you've probably heard of. I'm a cruising sailor, as you probably are well. I'm also a Canadian, and as a result of that, I was able to go to Cuba last year, a trip that I believe that Americans believe it will be able to make in the next year or two. What I'd like to do now is tell you a little bit about that trip and how I was finally able to fulfill a long-held ambition of mine to travel to Cuba. In my trip to Cuba, I deliberately chose a route which minimized overnight sails and was basically a route of day sails that any sailor of average ability with a good boat can handle. I've chosen to call that route Cuba Hamas. What exactly do you need to go to Cuba? Well, some of your primary needs are going to be charts. Of course, the other thing you're going to need to bring along is money. Automatically assume that you are not going to be able to find most of the items you want. Uh, the communist government and the communist economy is not efficient at providing supplies. Now, fuel, there is no problem with fuel. Water, no problem with water, although make sure that you have jerry jugs because you can't always get close to the docks. Did I mention there's a problem with toilet paper? Make sure you bring lots of items like that. Navigation, of course, is an issue when you're traveling in areas such as Cuba. What I recommend that people have is your electronic charts, probably from Garmin would be the best source, paper charts from Blue Water Charts, and also your Nigel Calder's Cruising Guide to Cuba. As you can see, this is what happens if you make a mistake. The Cubans were ready to arrange a, a tow boat for me if I was not able to catch the boat off. However, that would have involved calling to Havana, and it would have taken Lord knows how long to get it done. As you travel up and down the coast, you'll probably run into some Cuban fishermen or, or Cuban people with whom you'll end up trading gifts. Cubans are extremely friendly, and you have to understand that they, under, they realize the problem is not between people, it's between government. Some of the suggestions I would make would be clothing, uh, boat clothing, for example, hats, personal care items such as soaps, razors, toothpaste, toothbrushes, etc. The one thing I will caution you is don't try to give gifts to the Guarda Frontera or the people who are boarding your boat officially. They're absolutely not allowed to accept it. It won't be taken the right way. When you clear in at your first stop and on the route that I use, that was Puerto de Vita, you're going to be boarded by up to a, anywhere from eight to a dozen people. Some of the facilities that you'll find in Cuba are a little bit on the rough side. I mentioned paperwork. At every marina that you stop at, you'll have to fill out a marina form, which usually involves three or four pages and is done in triplicate. A question that I'm frequently asked is, what is the best way to explore Cuba? One thing you have to remember is that you are not allowed to leave your vessel unattended at an anchorage. So what I suggest to people is that tie up at a marina, rent a car or take a bike and use the bus system to get around and then explore the areas that you're going to. Some of the things that you'll see while exploring Cuba are things such as this bas relief wall in Holguin. Since 1959, very little has changed in terms of things like automobiles. You'll see a lot of automobiles that you would normally only see at, a, at an antique auto show here in the United States. And did I mention the music? If you're interested in more details on traveling to Cuba, then I would invite you to check out my uh, website at cubahamas.com. That's www.cubahamas.com. You can also take a look at the November 2009 issue of Sail Magazine. I have an article on Cuba that will be published in there. Or if you wish, you can also email me at northchannelsailing at gmail.com. And I'll be happy to answer whatever questions you have. In late 2010, Wally will again be cruising in Cuba to Havana and the South Coast. He'd like you to come aboard for the cruise. You can follow Wally's trip through video updates on sailmagazine.com. If you'd like to see Wally's full Cuba briefing video, and at the same time, support the Sarasota Yacht Club's Youth Sailing Initiative, you can purchase a download at thesailingchannel.tv forward slash Cuba. Papayara, los quinteros, esa se pa' quiti, papayara, los quinteros.